Hello, everyone. I'm Dan Faulkner, Registrar and CEO of the Royal College of Dental Surgeons of Ontario. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you about the College's work and about issues impacting the dental profession and our regulatory landscape. We get invitations from dental societies across the province, and I'm unfortunately not able to attend all of these meetings in person. We do want to engage with dentists and the public so that you're informed about the progress we're making and our plans for the future. I really appreciate your interest in the college and I'm delighted to have a chance to talk about the work we're doing. I'm going to start by providing you with an update on six topic areas. Strategic planning, continuing education, RCDSO department highlights, governance and regulatory landscape, provincial, federal updates, and partners and collaborators. I'll begin by telling you a little bit more about our strategic plan. You can see that we have six strategic projects in three areas of focus, professionalism, stakeholder engagement, and emerging issues. I want to tell you a little bit more about a couple of projects and our status. Some of you have seen our public and profession consultations. We have actively sought your opinions to hear about you on various topic areas. We currently have an open consultation in artificial intelligence, and we have some consultations upcoming on implant dentistry and sexual abuse and boundary violations. The QR code on the screen will allow you to connect to our webpage and learn more about the consultations that are active in the field. We also have some consultations that have recently closed. First, access to care was closed in April, and we had over 620 responses that were received, with two-thirds of those respondents being dentists. This consultation report will be considered by our professionalism working group, and we will have regular updates for you on our website. You can also see a QR code on your screen and find your way to the website where we have information that's available on low-cost and specialized clinics, and also those volunteer opportunities that dentists may wish to participate in. We recently also closed a consultation on practice models and corporate dentistry. We have close to 700 respondents and we're currently analyzing those responses as well. I'll turn now to our governance update. In May, Council approved a bylaw amendment to add up to four subject matter experts on the Inquiries, Complaints and Reports Committee. These are subject matter experts who will support the committee's work in various ways and may include experts in sexual abuse and trauma or experts in mental health and addiction. Other work that the Governance Committee is focusing on is looking at district elections and reform possibilities to those elections. Of course, this will take some time and council deliberation and implementation of any changes that might occur will not take place until 2026 at the earliest. I'll turn now to continuing education. Some of you may have participated in our May 9th RCDSO Connect session. There you heard from staff and committee on the results of our first continuing education audit using ePortfolio. You also heard about some new opportunities to earn CE points and some of the refinements and changes that are coming to the ePortfolio system and the PET redevelopment. If you wish, you can watch the video of RCDSO Connect on our YouTube channel to get a Category 3 CE point, and the QR code on the screen will allow you to connect to the YouTube channel. Let me tell you a little bit about some of the RCDSO department highlights. On the screen, you can see a slide that relates to our quality assurance program area. We have reflected some of the changes that are occurring to our pet assessments, CE audits and ePortfolio, and also the annual declaration of compliance with the QA program. Historically, our continuing education audits were conducted on a random selection basis, and we were only able to do about 240 per year in a fairly manual and labor-intensive process. Now, with the ePortfolio system availability, we're able to audit about 100% of our registrants whose cycle has ended in a given year. This past year, 
we were able to audit close to 1,700 registrants whose CE cycle ended in December 2023. With respect to registration or licensure, we are required as a college by statute to meet certain regulatory timelines for various parts of our registration process. On the screen, you can see some information about our registration timelines. We are required to meet certain regulated timelines for decisions about licensure applications. Our registration team consistently exceeds these timelines, and you can see that we are far below the 30 days that are required by legislation to take a completed application and make a decision. With respect to our facilities inspection program, we have heard from the profession that our backlog is too high. Our work over the past couple of years has been to close as many open CT facility permit applications as possible. And you can see that we are doing so with all of those applications that have been submitted prior to 2023. And we are actively working on reducing the backlog for 2023 applications. We will continue to provide this information to the profession as our demonstration of accountability to provide you with timely services with respect to the facilities inspection program. Our investigation area has been very active in reducing its own backlog of files. The key point from this slide is the 55% reduction in open case files from August 2021 to December 2023. This is the lowest number of active investigations that we've had since we started to track these files. And there are a number of reasons why we have been able to do so, including increasing the number of panel meetings that meet per year and making changes to our investigation process that continues to provide the due diligence that is expected, but also to reduce the timelines for both the complainant and the dentist who has received the complaint. Our investigations process has been very active in many different ways. We are trying to open files in five days or less. We are seeing fewer active investigations, as I mentioned previously. And as of the beginning of this year, only 67 investigations that were received or initiated before January 1st, 2023 are still active. We're also receiving an all-time high in complaints and investigations. We've changed our online complaints form so that the public has greater access and greater choice in how they wish to submit their concerns to the college. I wanna briefly talk about issues that relate to corporate pharmacy and the regulator, the Ontario College of Pharmacists. We have learned that Corporate pharmacy is directing patients to specified pharmacies in the province and also directing pharmacists to perform unnecessary services and meet production quotas. This creates a situation where patient autonomy and choice is restricted, and it also leads to situations where the pharmacist's autonomy and their independent clinical judgment is restricted. The Ontario College of Pharmacists is taking a zero tolerance approach for any business practices that impede pharmacy professionals' ability to provide effective and safe care to their patients. They're also exploring what regulatory or legislative solutions might be required and working with the government to see if new tools can be available. This is something that we are watching very closely because of its direct relevance to the increase in corporate ownership of dental practices in Ontario. Also on the regulatory landscape is the National Dental Specialty Examination. For specialists in the audience, you will know this to be the examination that you take that allows you to be licensed as a specialist in Canada. The Royal College of Dentists of Canada has begun to redevelop and administer and deliver the NDSE to all specialists. They've undertaken a complete overhaul of their exam delivery, the psychometrics of the examinations, and the costs of the examination. And this is a great example of how the regulatory authorities, the National Dental Examining Board of Canada, 
and the Royal College of Dentists of Canada are working together in partnership to create the best possible national dental specialty examination that we can. Another emerging issue relates to the Ontario Physicians and Surgeons Discipline Tribunal. The College of Physicians and Surgeons of Ontario has created an independent administrative tribunal with expert adjudicators to work alongside professional members and public council members to hear proceedings that relate to physicians who are being disciplined. This is a pilot project that is now being undertaken with three other colleges in Ontario, and the Royal College of Dental Surgeons of Ontario is watching this very closely to see if it has relevance to our work down the road. Let me talk now briefly about partners and collaborators. All of you are aware of the Canadian Dental Care Program. Recently, the college wrote to both the federal and the provincial ministers of health to ensure that our issue of access to care is front and center in all of the work that's being done to implement the CDCP. In our letter to the ministers, we thanked the ministers for removing the removal of dental registration requirements. We also urged the two ministers to focus on seamless access between the federal and provincial government programs so that patients can navigate the system of care in as seamless a way as possible. And we also indicated our willingness to co-design an on-site verification audit as part of the national program. We followed this up with a meeting with the minister's office and reiterated those messages to the minister. Internationally trained dentists is also an area of great interest across the country. Recently, the Association of Canadian Faculties of Dentistry received federal funding in the amount of $8 million over three years to create another alternative pathway for internationally trained dentists. Known as a gap training assessment, this will allow some internationally trained dentists who are close to meeting the standard in Canada to be quickly assessed and to receive some education for those gaps and to move towards the licensing process as quickly as possible. And finally, we're very pleased to report that the college has entered into a partnership with Special Olympics Ontario. Special Olympics Ontario is a new approved sponsor for CE Points, where dentists can access education that has been created through Special Olympics Ontario that will help to leverage coaching, mentoring, and training that you might complete while you're volunteering. And it also will provide training that will help you to become more comfortable in treating patients living with disabilities in your practice. There's more information on these volunteering opportunities in our webpage, and you can access the opportunities through the QR code on the screen. We recently had an opportunity to have a booth at the Ontario Dental Association annual spring meeting. In addition to the educational support that we provide at the annual spring meeting, we also were able to meet and greet many of you who stopped by the booth to get information from some of our expert staff on all of the different program areas in the college. We were pleased to welcome over 400 visitors and very excited to provide resources that will be useful to you in your practice. I want to wrap up by noting that you can reach out to us at any time. Our practice advisory service is ready to answer your questions. I also encourage you to follow us on social media to hear the latest news and updates from the college. Be on the lookout for our summer newsletter, which will be published in June. Thank you so much for your time, and please don't hesitate to reach out to us.